Well, welcome to another edition of Talking with JM. I am your host, Good Old JM, coming to you from CSB Studios in Tampa, Florida, the birthplace of pro wrestling. And I am very happy to say that my guest today is the one and only Jeannie Basun, but the rest of the world knows her as Hollywood, as one of the original gorgeous ladies of wrestling, or GLOW for short. And she is here with me now via telephone, joining me in the studios. How are you doing, Hollywood? I'm good. How are you today? Very good. Very good. Uh, thank you for for coming aboard. Uh, a bit of a uh, thank you. <laughs> this is a bit of a of a makeup show as uh, we try to do this before, and unfortunately, you felt ill, but uh, you were such a good sport that you were able to reschedule. And again, I appreciate that to the highest, and thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Oh yeah, I had a cough that would not go away, and mm-hmm. I would say that last time I talked to you. Mm-hmm. You know, I might have, I can't remember if I was in Philly, but man, those were three hard days. I mm-hmm. barely could get myself moving, but um, but I'm well, you know, for the holidays, yes. and uh, I'm good to go. So thanks for having me. Yeah, so speaking of which, how, how was your Christmas week so far? My Christmas was excellent. And yours? Uh, very good. Spending time with family, got a few surprise gifts, and uh, yeah, you know, the kids, nieces and nephews all over the house. Going, driving yourselves crazy, but yeah, oh, of course, a lot of fun. <laughs> so, how about we get right into this and find out who Hollywood, uh, where where you came from, what she's been up to, and what she's doing for the future. So, cool. So, before auditioning, of what ended up being Glow, you used to work in the medical field. Um, were you a pro wrestling fan growing up? No. <laughs> That's funny that you say that. Nope, I did not really know much about wrestling. I knew Mm -hmm. about other sports, but wrestling just wasn't, I don't know, maybe just in California, it just wasn't, um, or I wasn't just, you know, into the whole wrestling thing. I mean, for me, it was baseball and football, and so those were major sports that I would see in Los Angeles. I mean, I was a huge Dodger fan, and Mm -hmm. of course, growing up as a kid, it was the Rams. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so, so for me, wrestling, I didn't know much about it. I remember seeing my grandfather watch a little bit of it on TV and I watched mm-hmm. it with him. Um, but, uh, not until, you know, I had this audition, mm-hmm. um, that I thought, well, I can do that. Let's, let's, um, let's go through the training. And Mondo Guerrero was mm-hmm. the trainer and, um, you know, they picked 12 girls to do a pilot Right. I was one of the 12 girls that went through all of that, and we did a pilot. We shot it in Las Vegas in the uh, the end of 1985, and we took it to uh, syndication. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called Nappy, N-A-T-P-E, and back in the day it was huge where you would go and sell the show to the buyers. And uh, I think it was myself, Matilda DeHaan, Tammy Jones, and Americana, were the ones right. that went to that first nappy along with uh, Matt Simber and David McClain. And we sat there in our little booth and mm-hmm. showed them our pilot that we had shot, and we ended up selling it. So then we moved to Vegas. And so then I quit my job in the medical field, which mm-hmm. you were talking about, yes. and um, moved to Vegas and started wrestling. So um, <laughs> and then we did, I had no idea, really. You know, back then, too, we you is like, what are we doing? Right. What? All women's wrestling on TV? Oh my God, this is this is scary, but I'm excited and <laughs> and uh, let's see what happens of that. You know? So mm-hmm. I did four seasons. I did the pilot. Right. And I did the first and second season. And then a lot of those ladies, um, you know, went in different directions. And then we had an all new cast uh, for seasons three and four. And, and started that back up. So, you know, it was great. It right. was something I wasn't sure if I was going to come back either. I'm like, oh, do I want to come back? Right. I've been doing this for four years nonstop. I kind of just want to be a 20-year-old mm-hmm. and kind of hang out with my friends and right. not have to be in a different, you know, city or a different state and, uh, you know, and be here. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, with that said, and not being a wrestling fan growing up, but there had to have been your favorites, at least uh, as far as role models growing up. Do you have any, or did you have any growing up role models? You know, back then, 
there wasn't a lot to look up to. I mm. mean, I think there was Wonder Woman. That's about oh, it. Okay. There, there was really, yeah. If you think about in our cartoons and the Mighty Isis, for me, at least in mm. my generation, mm-hmm. that was all we had. So we didn't really have a lot of role, uh, you know, role mm. models. Well, that's true. Yeah, but at least as far as television goes, very limited compared yeah. to today. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. And we got to remember, too, and we all know this, and I'm just saying if the young kids are listening to it, you know, we didn't have the luxury of <laughs> cell phones and social media right. and computers. Right. So it was, it was just, you know, TV and snail mail. That's about it. <laughs> How boring. <laughs> <laughs> so what I assume... During your auditions, was the first time you ever actually bumped in the ring? Yes, it was. Unless you want to talk about, you know, playing softball and volleyball and basketball, because <laughs> I played all of those scholastically in school. So, yes, um, I was an athlete already, mm-hmm. just not so a wrestling athlete. Right. didn't know anything about it. So I had to start like everybody else, and we all had to start from the beginning. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, so during training, can you point out what, what might have been the most difficult part about it? all fun. You know, I just remembering all the holds because there were so many. You can only be taught so much in two months. You know, my training was about two and a half months with Mondo. So, you know, you write everything. So for me, it was you know, that the more difficult thing was remembering everything and then incorporating that into your match and then trying to figure out, well, who's my character? What what, what exactly is Hollywood? Mm -hmm. Because that was no one like you know, you couldn't, if you if you were like the farmer's daughter, you could kind of figure out what a farmer's daughter is. Right. If you were Americana, you could figure out, well, liberty and justice for all. You know, you could figure that kind of stuff out. Mm-hmm. But the character Hollywood, who the heck is Hollywood and Vine? Like, <laughs> I'm from California, but what, what does that mean? Right. You know, how, who are these characters? And so they gave us a little, you know, a little description of what our characters should be. And of course, I'm like, oh, okay, so there are these little street punk kids. Right. They're heels. They steal purses and watches and money <laughs> or whatever. I'm like, oh, gosh. I'm like, let's make them cooler than that. <laughs> so, you know, I started changing up our outfits, crimping the hair. Mm-hmm. We had makeup, you know. Um, I, I liked a lot of rock and roll, so I incorporated songs and, right. and that kind of, um, kind of, you know, costume wear around the rock and roll scene of the 80s. Right. So that's where all that came from. Yeah, it was a good look. I I really dug it when once I got into <laughs> watching the show. I was like, okay, might be a little bit out of my age range, but yeah, hey. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> but so what? Right. You're a healthy kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Were there any injuries while training or on the show itself for yourself? Um, for myself, yeah. no injuries. I was really lucky, but like I said, mm-hmm. you know, one of the most important things that our director had us do is work out. Mm-hmm. You know, not just not just learning the holds and the moves, but um, you know, work out, get get yourself in the gym. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't really have a problem. Um, like I ate whatever I wanted, and and if you look at those, I'm so thin. But we worked <laughs> so hard. We there was no time to gain weight for me. It was just eat, eat, work, 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 and. Right travel and um i didn't have any any problems with with weight or mm-hmm. you know and, and the, the training was great um so yeah yeah <laughs> well as you yeah. as you're describing it can be very physically demanding uh, between the training uh, the weightlifting, the gym uh, all that especially in the ring yeah so with that said you know uh, mm-hmm. yeah go ahead i'm sorry now I was going to say, so what, what drove you to keep you going and, and eventually make it to the main roster of GLOW? You know, how, how do you know if you're the main roster or not? That's, that's the ticket. So mm-hmm. I just think, you know, having a cool character, first of all, to mm-hmm. play, playing a heel, um, and then you just figure out, well, does, is, is the audience going to like you or not? That could be hit or miss for right, anybody. Right. You know, but here's the thing. You know you're doing your job. If they're booing you, okay, so if you're a heel and they're booing you, <laughs> but then you lose and then they're booing the winner because they <laughs> want you to win, <laughs> you kind of know that you're, you're kind of popular. Again, there's no 
you know, cell phones and social media. There's none of that. So all you know is when you're done with your gig, um, those people that are booing you and mm-hmm. they come up for an autograph because I looked at them like, you two guys are booing me. I saw you. Yes, but we <laughs> love you, Hollywood. So then you know, you know. And then we got fan letters. and We didn't get a lot of our mail. Mm-hmm. Um, that was one thing that, they didn't give us our fan mail, so oh. I found it by accident. You oh. know, I went up to the office one day to pick up a check. Mm-hmm. Hey, I go, what's all that stuff? There's something mail in the corner, those mailbags. Oh, that's glow mail. I go, what? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so I went through it real quick. No one was around, and I'm pulling and pulling, you know? So mm-hmm. that's when you, you know, there was tons of mail for the girls. So, yeah, in, in a way... You know, mm-hmm. like I said, you don't know if you're popular if you don't get that fan mail or, we, you know, when you're on tour and you've got all these kids screaming your name and dressing the same way you, then you mm-hmm. kind of figure out, wow, maybe maybe they do like me. <laughs> well, you're doing something right, though, especially the way you describe it. So, yes, especially, right. Especially later we'll hear the phrase, uh, fans are going to love to hate. So <laughs> Yes, that's it. Yes, that's a good phrase, yes. You mentioned uh, briefly about being in the medical field before you joined uh, the ranks mm-hmm. of pro wrestling. Uh, if you didn't join GLOW at all, would it have been another profession you would have tried to uh, accomplish? I guess, you know. Um, well, medical was not my thing. It was just to, you know, appease your, your folks, your, mm-hmm. your parents. You mm-hmm. know, I was more like, what do I want to be? Do I want to be a flight attendant? Do I want to mm-hmm. be the president of the United States? What do I want to do? But I knew, I will tell you, I loved entertainment a lot. Okay. So somehow I would have made my way into the entertainment business, mm-hmm. uh, you know, sports entertainment, acting, mm-hmm. modeling, what have you. I knew I already liked that. So this just really came in the palm of my hand. You know, I always say to certain people, I just happen to be at the right place mm-hmm. at the right time during all of it. Yeah, I was just actually th- just thinking that right place, right time, especially when Glow yeah. came around. Yeah, because you know you got to figure out where were you, right? You know, who, where were you? Mm-hmm. Are, are some of the other ladies that are have been in independent wrestling who have been, you know, wrestling all these years? You know, they they were too, either too young, mm-hmm. you know, or or not in the right place at the right time. So exactly, you know, I just feel very blessed to have been able. Uh, to have an opportunity and the chance to do a show that who mm-hmm. would have thought 32 years later mm-hmm. Netflix would come up yeah. across. That's just crazy. It, it's amazing how, how that th- happened. Yeah, it's amazing yeah. how things come together. I and, know. It just, mm. You know, that whole thing reignited, um, you know, Exactly. The whole glow 80s wrestling thing. It, 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 it did, yeah. And I'm a big fan of it. Uh, season three comes on next year. and I know, I'm so excited. <laughs> I was, <laughs> was going to touch base a little bit later on about uh, the, the glow next, uh, the glow Netflix series. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll swing around back that to that point. Um, how, how was the Hollywood name created? Was that your idea? Yeah, no, it wasn't my idea. So um, when we did those that pilot, mm-hmm. so when we were all training, David McLean and Matt Simber had 12 characters that they had already um, created, Mm -hmm. and they were looking for um, us girls to fill those roles. So there was, Mm -hmm. there was already, there was a Hollywood and Vine, a Tina and Ashley, um, there was, let's see, the Royal Hawaiian, there was a Spanish Red, Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are all those characters that they had already, so they were just looking, putting our personalities with those particular characters. Somehow they just said, you, Jeannie, are going Mm -hmm. to play Hollywood. I'm like, yes! Oh, I'm (laughs) excited! I thought her character was kind of cool, you know, I thought that Tina and Ashley, which Tina was played by Lisa Moretti, who, Mm -hmm. um, was Ivory, in the WWE, went on, you know, look at her. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just Wonderful, and to be in the Hall of Fame. Look at yeah. her. That's yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I was very fortunate to meet her. Uh, maybe oh, good. Like two or three months before the Hall of Fame induction, and I told her, "Oh, yeah, good. congratulations!" And I, well, I met her before, way back when in two thousand, and still had that photo I took uh, of us. Oh, then. I 
love it. Good yeah, for you. And, and I had that autograph. That's so great. <laughs> we, we both looked at it and looked at each other. That's, wow, how, uh -huh. how, how times have changed. But <laughs> you know, nature That's takes over great. sometimes. <laughs> oh yeah, nature takes over on all of us. But you know what? If you, it doesn't matter if that happens. The thing right. is, is you know, for myself, mm -hmm. you know, just eating, just trying to eat correctly. Now, right now <laughs> during the holidays, it's been hard. Uh, making yes. lasagna and meatballs oh, and Lord. pasta. And oh, I know goodness. exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh! In my refrigerator, and every morning I look, or afternoon, I'm like, "Ooh, I can have another bite. Ooh, another bite. <laughs> oh, let's have this for lunch." Yeah, it's almost gone, so I'll start my diet uh, right. after the holidays. Yeah. No, but you, you've been doing good. You, you do the, which again, we'll talk about a little bit later. You do your Facebook Live videos and, you know, you're showing yeah. a lot of fitness maneuvers. You do a lot of planking, which is not easy to do. I do planking. <laughs> That's not easy. Oh, it's even harder when you've been away from it. Yes. I've done, I think, the last three in a row, three days in a row or yes. whatever. Woo! Those have been <laughs> and try to talk and do them. Oh, yes. That's the hardest yes. part. Talking <laughs> and doing it is even harder. <laughs> But yes, I definitely recommend everyone to follow uh, Hollywood on Facebook. I actually throw out social media, but uh, we'll, again, we'll cover that in a little while. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, you mentioned uh, David McLean, uh, who, who had ties with the business even before Glow even started, as he was working with the World Wrestling Association. And he had the idea and was told that it would not work, as at the time, women's wrestling was not as popular as the men's. But he stood right. firm with the idea. He wanted to move forward. So... How was the yeah, concept? that's what I... Yes. And I was going to say, so uh, the, the concept itself of GLOW, and you mentioned it before, the auditions with, uh, and the training with Mondo Guerrero, and how was it exactly explained to you as compared to, say, at the time, the World Wrestling Federation and the NWA? Basically, he just said to us in that first interview mm -hmm. that was at the Hyatt on Sunset, he just looked at all the girls and said, we're going to do a show about women's wrestling. I was like, <laughs> What? <laughs> What? All women's wrestling. I looked through, I didn't know anybody at that interview or that mm. audition. I looked mm. around and I saw a bunch of girls pick up their pictures and their resumes and they walked out the door. I was like, oh no. What does that mean? <laughs> does that mean they're just as scared as I am? <laughs> and, but they're walking out the door now. Right. Holy crap. I was like, <laughs> what do we do? So that's how they explained it. That's exactly. So, you know, that was his passion. And that's what I loved about him. He just kept going and going and going with it. He was like, I want, you know, he's more sport wrestling. Mm -hmm. He wanted our show to be more wrestling, of course. Our director didn't want that direction. He mm -hmm. wanted it campy. So when people see, that's why Glow is different, because we had those comedy sketches, and that was the vision of our director, Matt Simber. So you put mm -hmm. his vision of acting, and you put... David McLean sports vision into this all women's wrestling, and that's what you got. You got, you know, Glow, mm -hmm. and then you had they hired, you know, Stephen Blant for one of the writers, um, and he did a lot of our our sketches for us. So, mm -hmm. so you know, that's why Glow was different. It just had two visions of two different types of uh, people. Yes, I do remember watching a lot of the old episodes. Uh, not all of them, but there are clips. Yeah, yeah, especially on YouTube, for example. And it, it does take me back. It had that unique humor. It had that uh, unique look. And not everything was focused too much in the ring rather than just uh, um, expo right. uh, share and, and show uh, basically everyone's ability as, as acting and, uh, and, right. and, and, right. and body language. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah, very, very different. But, uh, of course, the most important part Look of it. Look at our hairstyles. Look yes. Look at the hair. Look at the perm. <laughs> those 80-perm-looking hairstyles. Yes. And the glitter. <laughs> and, and the colorful costumes. Right. But uh, I think the most important, just as important as everything else, but I think the, the, the main part was about being entertaining. And it was in, in, right. in all fronts, I believe. And it, it definitely kept me glued Thank in. You. Yeah, every weekend, at least uh, out of New York, where... Uh, I was born and raised in WPIX. Yes, WPIX. yes. It, it was, <laughs> um, <laughs> th th there were weekends that they were preemptive because, you know, they had uh, special events or whatever going on. So I had yes. to wait to the following yes. week. And that always would be the follow up episode. It was skipped, the one it was supposed to air. It was like really frustrating. And <laughs> I would find out through wrestling magazines of what happened. 
And yeah, it was like, again re- really yeah. kept me glued. And the, back then, it was just a weekend of wrestling between Glow and then the WWF, and depending where you lived, yes. some sometimes NWA. But weekends were always like wrestling weekends for me and, and some of my friends. We just wouldn't leave the house, we wouldn't play in the garden or wherever. Like kids That's don't awesome. do nowadays. But for those, yeah, right. I know. For I those, agree with you. God. <laughs> For those few hours that uh, wrestling was available on TV, that's where I was and just had my oh, soda bottle. Thank you and, for watching and, that. <laughs> yeah, so. That's great. And unfortunately, Glow was canceled. And yes. the internet and after social... After the fourth season. Yes. After that fourth season, yeah. Uh, obviously at the time... Well, we, I yes. think it would have went. It would have went. Uh-huh. Was, there were just some issues going on. You know, it, someone was upset about something mm-hmm. and, and uh, you know, there's just right. so many different versions. Right. Of right. Why it was pulled, you know? Um, so unfortunately it was, mm-hmm. and the owner, which was reckless of the Riviera hotel was right. basically saying, oh, I'm pulling. And he, you know, he was the one that put the money and he was the backer mm-hmm. for it. Mm-hmm. And uh, he pulled it. And once that money stopped, that was it. You know, we just got this. We just got this call mm-hmm. that said no more show. And it's kind of like what? so. So that came out of nowhere. Like, what do I? That came out of nowhere. Wow. Absolutely. Yep. Thinking, what do we do now? Yeah. You, you yeah. know, what the hell am I going to do now? <laughs> You, yeah, you, you pretty much answered that my, my next question as far as... <laughs> Sorry. Well, no, 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 it's okay. Hey, at least we're on the same mind track. I like that. Um, yes. uh, obviously, the internet and social media didn't exist back then, but there were, like you said, rumors of what what was the ultimate demise of GLOW. Of course, one of being a Mr. Rickless. Uh, and I believe it was touched uh, loosely on the documentary based on GLOW. I think it was on 2012 release. And it's on Netflix as yes. well. Correct. And but uh, the the rumor, the rumor was that uh, Mr. Rickless had money issues and that, uh, that that he owed money to others, and that somehow caught up with him. Uh, however, uh, the farmer's daughter, uh, Ursula Hayden, the, the current owner of Glow, shut all those rumors down. But again, wasn't too clear. So, you know, not pushing any buttons or putting anyone on the spot. If it's one of those uh, answers that probably shouldn't be answered now or ever, then point being, it, it it's not in business anymore, unfortunately. And right. and the fact that uh, no one got hurt after after the fact, and right. there were some opportunities for almost everyone to to move on to other sure. opportunities. Sure, sure, yeah, absolutely. There was opportunities for everybody to move on. For me, I was mm. like, oh my gosh, I've been doing this for four years straight. I'm right. done. I want to be. I want to enjoy my twenties. Mm-hmm. Then I broke my leg. And yeah. WWE had come. It was WWF. Right. And they had come into Los Angeles, and I was told to go to that interview. I went, but I just got a broken leg. Oh, so wow. basically, I tried to cover it up. Mm-hmm. You know, I was wearing sweatpants and still <laughs> limping really bad. I mean, mm-hmm. my leg couldn't even bend, seriously. Uh, mm-hmm. So <clears throat> I, they were asking me a bunch of questions. Jim Ross was there and a couple mm-hmm. other guys, and they're like, who trained you? And I'm like, and they're like, yes, da 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 da. And they're asking all these <laughs> questions, and they were really interested. And I finally, so I just, I tell the truth. I don't like mm-hmm. to lie. Mm-hmm. I said, you guys, I'm right in the middle of a broken way. Because you know what? I didn't want to get there and lie. And all right. this, there's no way. I was not 100%. That was it. That was my, my audition. But I, mm-hmm. it was neither here nor there for me. So mm-hmm. I didn't, I wasn't upset mm-hmm. <laughs> or sad. I'm like, well, moving on and you know I started I started mm. working with a lot of other independent companies but I told myself after I broke my leg I'm mm. I am never wrestling again I was mm. so frightened and so freaked out because <laughs> I didn't just break it in one place I broke it in three places Ooh. so it was a bad bad break I still have seven screws and two plates in the white leg and I'm like oh. man I'm done but mm. I still dabbled in it and I still do today Right. That was another thing you asked me earlier, is like, mm-hmm. you know, what do you, you know, but I'm sure we'll get to that, but, mm-hmm. but yeah, during that time, I'm like, oh, I was cool with it, I'm like, I'm cool, <laughs> well, I don't wrestle right now, mm-hmm. I'll wrestle later, right. you know, which I did, because that's what I knew, and that's mm-hmm. what paid my bills. Right. Wow, so I, I would assume there wasn't any follow-up with the WWE after that. No, I didn't. I was just like, nah, mm. nope, too much. You know what? I had heard stories from different people about being on the road and how mm. much more. I'm like, oh, God. I go, it's going to be worse than what we had. I, I just, 
I'm like, I don't want any part of it. Right. Uh, well, they, I mean, that was my reason. They've somewhat lightened up on the schedule, but still is very hectic, especially yeah. you could have a day off, but you're still expected to make appearances or correct promotion, uh, promotions, I, I should say. Um, Which is great because mm-hmm. I'm all over it. But back in that time, yeah. back then for me, I wasn't over. I was like, no way. Uh, uh-uh. uh. I mean, I, you just when you've been in a company for four years, mm-hmm. you've had enough. You just you want your freedom for a while. And that's all I was looking at. I was like, man, I want to do some of this stuff here. I mm-hmm. want to make my own my own schedule. Mm-hmm. Which you know, I ended up doing working for who I wanted to, or saying yes or no to who I wanted. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't want to be back on a hectic schedule um, and having somebody else tell me you're doing it this way, blah, 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 mm-hmm. rude, taking your life over. That's basically kind mm-hmm. of what it is. And I wasn't ready right. for that. You know, I needed a break. Right. Well, de- we definitely all do at some point. Yeah. And it was suggested, had Glow done uh, a few more shows outside of Nevada, which I, I believe they did, uh, a couple of live events or house shows, if you will. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe, uh, again, the suggestion was doing more of that in bigger venues and more sponsorships, among other ideas, that GLOW would have lasted a little longer. Uh, what say you? Possibly, yeah. Yeah? And it was different. But back then, I know you were younger. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember an interview that Susie Spirit had done. Mm-hmm. And, and um, you know, she had a job working in Las Vegas as a professional dancer at the Follies Berger show. Um and she was like, she had to keep it on the lowdown. She was just like, no way. They can't know because if they know that I'm wrestling, they'll fire me. And so they didn't look at wrestling. I don't think people looked at it as this glamorous thing. Mm-hmm. Not then. Right. It was different. And so people kind of hid it a little bit more. Um, you know, today is way different. It's, it's different. But back then, I don't know, maybe people, maybe they thought that that was shameful or, or mm-hmm. something. Yeah, we loved what we did. And let me tell you, when you're 22 years old <laughs> and you have this opportunity to be on television and to perform, man, I gave it 110%, as did all the other ladies who worked on that show. You know, we had fun with it. You know, I didn't feel shameful about it. But still, there was just, you know, you talk to some of the girls and you get different answers and different, you know, <laughs> different feelings about the show. Um so maybe, who knows? And, and then, of course, on the third and fourth season, they had had enough of us. There were certain companies who were like, you can't do that. You can't have those heavy metal sisters coming out in that. You can't show that. Oh, my God. They, they have rules. And, you know, we'll right. shut, we won't put you on our station anymore. Right. <laughs> you know, there was a lot of that going on back then. No, oh, that was unfortunate. But at least. Uh... That's Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, of course, we always have the memories now. Um, there's no official release as far as home video of all the seasons of GLOW. No, uh, no, there isn't. You, I think because they don't have all the videos. They don't have all the tapes. That, you know, I remember looking for the tapes with Ursula mm-hmm. uh, in uh, early 2000. Mm-hmm. We were trying to find all of them. She had some of them, but, you know, to find those whatever the inch tapes they were, mm-hmm. and then ha- we had a few of them looked at to see what they, what shape they were in, Mm -hmm. you know, to preserve them, Mm -hmm. Um, because my idea back in that, back then was, let's get all of them, all the, all the shows, and let's edit them down to 30 minutes, and sell them to, you know, ESPN Classic, or to W, whoever, and sell that, and put those back on TV, and that was my idea back, you know, but I didn't own any of the rights, Mm -hmm. I couldn't do much. You know, you can only say so much to somebody. Right. You know, if they want to do because that, you know, it was out of my hands. I couldn't convince Ursula at the time to do that. Right. You know, Plus, I don't even know if she knew where all the tapes were. That was hard trying to find. Well, where are right. the masters? Who has those? Who would have them? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, and I, I've heard stories. Maybe our director might know where they may be. They could be in Las Vegas somewhere. You know, hmm. who knows? Well, hopefully it's anyone that listens to this would reconsider and yes. yeah, come out with a new box come set. Come out with something. It would yeah. be fun. A box set. That people would love it. Yeah, you definitely. Know, maybe they are working on that. You know, they could be. Mm-hmm. Especially well, with the popularity. The to know. Right. Yeah, with the popularity of the show. Mm-hmm. Oh, my! like I said, to, to reignite all of this, 
Right, and and have uh, pop culture today, Woo. and have everyone else <laughs> who has been uh, almost but forgotten the, the recognition today of, you know, yes. they, they kind of paved the way as well. If you think about it, at least, at least at least I I believe so to what was yeah. what's here now, bringing back women's wrestling, the yeah. evolution or revolution, whatever you want to call it. But of, yeah, it, it's here now, and it's moving forward, and and as strong and, and as it could be. And you know what? Yeah. I, I'm all for it. Uh, and, and kudos to them. Me too. We and I always say in all my interviews, I always just say you can't forget the pioneers. You can't mm-hmm. forget your Mildred Burke and your Penny Banners <laughs> and your Rita Cortez and Winnie Richter. Right. And, you know, <laughs> Ivory and Sable and China and Lita, Austin awesome mm-hmm. Kong, Molina, oh, yes. AJ Lee. <laughs> you know, now we have our Charlotte Flares and Pages and Sasha Banks. Woo! <laughs> it's come a long way, right? It, it definitely oh, has. Oh, and your and your Hollywood. Of course. Oh, hey. Hey, you're, still, you're still with us. Yeah. yeah. There you go. I forgot myself, darn it. <laughs> and you would continue with the business even after Glow, having runs with Crush yeah. and Beauty Slammers and Hottest Ladies yeah. of Wrestlings. And it sounded like at the time, especially now, you weren't ready to hang up the boots. Not even. It's when you know something so well, mm-hmm. you stick with it. I've always loved it. You know, um, mm-hmm. Even more so now. I dabble in it. I still, you know, I have my own company. I have Hollywood Productions. I started that way back in the day before I broke the leg. Mm -hmm. Um, Doing some independent wrestling Mm -hmm. um, with different ladies. Um, And then, you know, Beauty Slammers came around, and that was a bunch of girls from um, from Canada Mm -hmm. who were the most awesome athletes. They still are wonderful. They're much younger. I emceed for them. I watch those girls you know, give 110% every single night. We were in Nova Scotia, and it was cold. And we were inside, like, um, ice rink, you know, <laughs> you know, where they would set up the um, the ring, would be like in an ice kind of hockey rink. Oh, it was cold outside and cold inside. Damn. Right. I was like, I don't know how these girls are doing this, but, boy, when people have the fever, when you get the wrestling fever, mm-hmm. you just have it. You either have it or you don't. And I think that's what makes, um, you know, a wrestler more popular. If you've got that fever, it makes you go straight to the top. And people won't forget you. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Now, you're also credited as a, as a stunt woman. Yes. Um, Lightning got me into that. Cheryl Rusa, who was one of the characters who played Lightning in mm-hmm. uh, the third and fourth season. She, we were real close to each other, and we were actually, she's a, you know, a baby face, and I'm the heel, and we still, we, but, but we, we um, loved music. Um, we both had boyfriends in bands back then, and we mm-hmm. talk about live music and this and that. So we got along well, but she turned me on to uh, the stunt work, and that was great because, but I wasn't ready for that either. So that's a whole other thing. You know, um, I still dabble in it, but now I've moved. I'm, uh, I'm part-time Nashville and part-time back in Los Angeles, and there's mm-hmm. really more work in the L.A. area. But, you know, that, if I, if I wasn't, wasn't so uh, wanting to uh, take the easy way out with wrestling, I would have gotten more into the stunt work because that's a whole family-oriented mm-hmm. type of thing. Once you're in, you're in. And the money there is great, and the residuals are awesome. Um, I enjoyed, you know, and I'll still do it. I'll still dabble here and there in it. If they call me, mm-hmm. I I go. <laughs> At least it's staying I'm busy, there. which is the great part. Yes, and then these new, you know, here's another thing, too, staying busy. Um, the conventions, we do mm-hmm. um, a lot of um, Comic-Con. Mm-hmm. So we have Rhode Island and... Uh, Hartford, Connecticut. I haven't done New York yet. Working mm-hmm. on Atlanta, uh, L.A. Like to go down to San Diego this coming year, but with this, you know, resurgence of uh, with Glow with Netflix, mm-hmm. people, young kids are look are just learning about it. Right. Um, watching the documentary that came out in 2012, mm-hmm. so they'll watch um, the doc, the story of the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. They'll mm-hmm. watch that, and then they they are just. And then some people don't even know. They're like, what? Right. What? What do you mean? This was a show right. before? <laughs> what are you talking about? And they get so excited and they, you know, we go and we, um, you know, I'll have some of the girls will sell all our merch mm-hmm. and all our old photos from the 80s. So those are exciting and I love going to those. Those mm. are, are badass. 
and just meeting new fans is great. Oh uh, yeah, it's always fun, especially when when we met up in New York uh, back in November. Yeah, and yes. yeah, just. You know, you're, you're also a human being. I just walked up and just introduced myself and just had a little chit chat there. Yes, yes. And I thought, like, wow, that was so cool. You know, it took me a, <laughs> took a few decades, but you know what? I'm, I'm here. <laughs> you know, talking That's to, right. Talking to Hollywood. I'll be back again. I'll be back in New York in April. There's a is it WrestleCon? I think it's WrestleCon. Yeah. Oh I'm yes. Yes. A, yeah, WrestleCon. I'll be at a table there. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's April the sixth. I'm not mistaken. So that'll be exciting. Oh, yeah, that's one of the biggest ones. We love our fans, Mm. man. Without the fans, we will have nothing, you know? So it's really important, you know, for entertainers and Mm. and, uh, our fans to get together. Um, We're going to be doing something uh, with some of the Glow fans in Los Angeles on January 25th. Mm. Uh, Me and the Royal Hawaiian and Lightning and Tanya and Jungle Woman. Oh, and yes. maybe the very yeah, maybe the very first California girl, Linda Alden, mm. and whoever else, maybe Daisy will be there. We're going to get together and uh, just do maybe like a lunch or even a dinner and mm-hmm. uh, a, a meet and greet. So right. really, really cool meet and greet. And, and then we've got our cruise. The cruise is coming yes. up. You oh, know, yes. um, and 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 I would have to say this is the first original Glow Glow cruise. There was three other ones with Afterglow. Mm-hmm. Um, but this will be the first for the original Glow Girls, which is different from the new girls. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's going to be September 7th out of Long Beach, going to uh, Mazatlan, uh, uh, Cabo San Lucas, and Puerto Vallarta. So we're excited about that. Those mm-hmm. are really fun gigs. <laughs> oh, definitely an opportunity for both old and new fans to yes. meet, like you said, meet and greet um, the original Go- There's uh, like meet and greets, and there's always lots of stuff we have. There's never a dull moment because mm-hmm. every day you're doing something with the girls. Right. Um, and then there's the excursions, and the girls will host the excursions, so that's kind of fun to host it. Mm-hmm. Have everybody come on out with you, and then we have dinner together, you know, and then there's like little raffles, and there's, you know, there's little, there's all, there's dance, not, there's like a certain night theme night. Mm-hmm. We'll have hula night. Oh, it'll be fun. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to put a twist in that hula thing. Oh, <laughs> I bet. <laughs> you will. I, I'm not going to tell anybody now. No one knows, not even the Royal Hawaiian, because that's going to be her her night. She's doing it. She's, but I'm putting a twist in that hula mm-hmm. thing. <laughs> her hula contest. <laughs> Well, you definitely lived up to your Hollywood name, and have you even made appearances on television and and even uh, blockbuster movies? Uh, and particularly, one of the hottest shows of all time, and one of my personal favorites, was Married with Children. Yes. And I almost forgot you were on on a couple of episodes because uh, you were blonde then. And yeah, I switch my hair. Yeah. Many times. <laughs> blonde, brunette, kind of reddish. Right, and I, I like it. I think, but mm. hair is hair. So. Right. I think it's kind of reinventing yourself a little bit. You right. know what I mean? That's that's a cool thing. If you're smart enough to do that, mm-hmm. you know, look at all look at the Kardashians. I think they've been dark and and white blonde. <laughs> I'm not a Kardashian. No, by no means, I'm not saying any of that. But you know, right, right. it's kind of neat to uh, you know just to reinvent Genie or Hollywood and right. um, by, by and you know. Mm-hmm. I think that's kind of great. Yeah, but it was blonde on, on Mary with Children. It was that white blonde. I think I was blonde for 10 years. And uh, that was a great show because Ed O'Neill on that show mm-hmm. is just so freaking <laughs> funny. I sat there going, oh, my God, I, I'm not supposed to laugh. But he was hilarious. And what a tremendous actor. Every mm-hmm. uh, Everybody on that show. So it was an honor to be on that show. And then I did another one afterwards where I played a dancer. I played a, mm-hmm. a dancer for Bud's 18th birthday at the Newton yes, Bar. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, because at the time, uh, no, uh, I would say about a year or so ago, I finally was able to purchase the uh, box set of all episodes of Married with Children. And, oh, my goodness. And I came across that uh, the first uh, your, your first appearance, and you you also yes, with the uh, farmer's uh, daughter. In season four. Yes. Yes, with Ursula, right. and we both have different hair. Yes. Brunette for whatever reason, <laughs> and, and shorter hair, and I'm blonde, white. We switched roles, right? <laughs> sort of. And where uh, that was fun. Uh, Al Bundy was expected to have a match with you and the farmer's daughter. Instead, he gets Big Bad Mama. And oh, he, that's, that's... <laughs> he just got thrown around like nobody's business. He did. He was thrown around like a rag doll. Yes. It was hilarious. 
one of my favorite episodes. Mm. And you know how that came about is mm. going to Nappy. When we went to sell our show to Nappy, mm. those producers of that show mm. was, were there. And I remember being introduced to them, not oh. knowing, mm. uh, seriously, not knowing that they were already making, had ideas in their head that we were going to mm. be on the show. And the weird thing was is they knew who they wanted, so they knew they wanted a farmer's daughter mm -hmm. and they knew they wanted Hollywood and they knew that they wanted a bigger rustler. I didn't know if they were going to get easy or, mm -hmm. or, or big bad mama, but mm -hmm. they already had that idea in their head. So when we mm -hmm. went, we didn't even have to audition. It was just mm -hmm. come in, read the side mm -hmm. now switch and read the sides again. <laughs> okay. See you guys on Monday. We had no <laughs> idea it was going to be like that. I'm like, where are the rest of the girls? Nope. Right. No, it, just, was, it was us. Yeah. So what a thrill and um, an honor, you know, to uh, hmm. be on that show. Yeah. I also, I believe that helped as well that the creators of Married with Children were also wrestling fans. And, yes, and, they and, loved it. And that the Bundy's name were named after King Kong Bundy. That's and of course, right. of course, you had a few uh, appearances on the show as well. So yeah, it helps when, especially when you're a wrestling fan, but maybe not necessarily to get into the business, but it's still part of you as, uh, growing up as a child. You want to do something with it and I guess become TV producers and have a few episodes in relations to pro wrestling in this case. The, the... That's what makes TV hmm. so fun. Yes. You know what I mean? That's to me what makes life interesting. Doing right. it the way, you know, doing what you love. Oh, yeah, to do a, a bit of a, uh, I guess crossovers is the best way to describe it. A, a show could be about family all of a sudden they attend a wrestling show and, right. and it's been done throughout the 80s and 90s. Uh, there will yes. be, be something wrestling related and ends up being one of the funniest episodes they ever had that season. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's hilarious. <laughs> uh, among married children, you had appearances or uh, uh, a hand in appearing in JAG, Days of Our Lives, Saved by the Bell, mm -hmm. which, yes. I, yes. which I completely forgot, <laughs> uh, along with the, the Larry Sanders show, A Living Color. Even me, myself, the and Larry Irene. Larry Sanders show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me, yeah. The Larry Sanders show is funny because um, I went here the other night and Jeremy Piven mm -hmm. worked, as I did as an actress, mm -hmm. on the Larry Sanders show. That was the Gary Shan that was Gary Shandling. Right. That was his show. Mm -hmm. And so he was here the other night and I didn't get to, I probably could have, but I didn't want to be that person. Mm -hmm. So I didn't stand around and wait, but I wanted to say hello to him mm -hmm. and refresh his memory of that particular show because look where you know where he's come you know he right. was it, yeah it's just pretty cool to see him do he was doing some stand up um here locally but uh but it was fun so yeah that was a great show all of those shows were great and a lot of those are um stunt work mm -hmm. some of them are stunts with uh, with acting in it as well um uh, that those are, you know, and right now I'm doing a little bit stuff on the East mm -hmm. Coast, working with my friend Christopher mm -hmm. Anino and Angel Orsini and Stephen Blance and Evan Ginsberg and Joe mm -hmm. Nemchek. We've been doing a little bit of acting, and this one kid, Christopher, he's a young guy, but he's got some really interesting, knowledgeable ways mm -hmm. of, of, and he's such a great actress, actor himself. I'm like, first I didn't think anything about it and go, yeah, 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 and then I saw him creating all of this and directing. I'm like, you've got something. Yeah, okay, I'll yeah. be a part of your project now. <laughs> okay. So we've been working on the Lollipop Gang, and it's so funny. <laughs> humor. Yeah. Total humor stuff. So I have that on my on my side if anybody wants to go look at some of that stuff. So kind of cool. So I mentioned uh, the movie Me, Myself, and Irene. So you did a Irene, yep. uh, stunt work on that one? You know what? We were just extras. We had some kind of featured stuff as bikini girls at the beach. Okay. All I remember about that, it wasn't anything mm -hmm. major, but um, they had our names in it, so mm -hmm. they gave us credit. So once you get a credit, mm -hmm. you know, you you're either you're either in it or sometimes you're out of it. Because I had done In Living Color right. and I had something on there. And I still get residuals to this day. Nice. Sometimes you're in it, and mm -hmm. sometimes you're cut out. Even though you did do it, mm -hmm. they're still paying you, which is, I don't get it. But I, I'll hey, take the check. I won't complain either. <laughs> no one's <laughs> complaining. <laughs> exactly. 
eventually you'll try to do a bit of crossover into video games. Um, probably, oh my God, you, yeah. You're probably yeah. sure where I'm going with this. Um, you play Jane for 3DO's yeah. Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. Ties. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't too successful, but even has a, a cult nope. following now. Somehow. It has a huge, yeah, isn't that so weird? <laughs> I have people, I did something that was on, I don't know what it was, it was a wrestling thing, it was on my YouTube channel, yeah. and someone goes, that's Jane! <laughs> 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 they didn't know me as Hollywood. Which right. Is really fun, which is, they said, that's Jane from Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. Mm -hmm. So that was just another being in the right place at the right time. A friend goes, hey, I need some help with this particular video game. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. And another guy goes, yep, we'll do it. Okay, we'll do it. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what? I don't get it. Right. Where's the game? What? What is the 3DO system? Where's the game? What do you, you want to Okay, here's the script. Okay, we'll say these lines, you know, and, and that was it. But wow. then you just got people. I have, I've had so many people email me from all over the world mm -hmm. talking about it. Some of them love it. Some of them hate them. Some don't get it. Right. Some are like neither here nor there. Some are huge fans, so mm -hmm. you get um, you get a lot of um, feedback and different. <laughs> you see, my reaction was, yeah, I don't get it, but at the same time, it, I, I just found it as hilarious as a, as a, as a game can be because it's not it's not your typical scrolling nope. one side to another nope. game like Mario, get nope. to the end and, and slide on a flagpole. Nope. No, it was just didn't make any sense. No, <laughs> but it, 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 it was unique for its time where it, it gave you options and depending on what you choose, the game takes a different direction. And, oh my, this, uh, I guess, you uh, again, a, a unique for its time and uh, Jane had a interview with, with uh, I, I believe, uh, her, her, her would-be employer and well, if you if you want to get the job, you, you got to do a certain task for me, and yes. I, I think that what caught the attention more of anything because it, it, it was an option. Yeah, to... people were like, what are those tasks? Right. What's <laughs> you going to have to do? There, let's tell everybody there is no nudity. No, no. There's there's no nudity or hmm. or somebody goes, oh, is it a porn? I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> oh my god. Let's just no. tell everybody right now. There's been no right. pornographic right. movies. Right. Okay. You know, um, but but pretty funny. It was just that's why people are like, "What?" But the, right. if you go on YouTube and do you see how mm -hmm. many it has over a million mm -hmm. hits on it? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The walkthroughs, yeah, and pe people swore. I mean, growing up, of course. No, there's a cheat code so, so you can see the nudity. No, no, you see, uh, you see Jane in all her glory, like years you later. Know, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you I, don't. I, no, you're a liar. <laughs> Remember. I have a towel around me, and I was <laughs> yeah. getting ready for work. Right. It's very PG, okay? Right, yes. Uh, you know, and um, I'm peeking through the curtain. Right, and it wasn't yeah. even that suggestive. Uh, it was not Did even... I show a leg? I might have showed my leg. Yeah. <laughs> Your thigh, shoulders, you know, that area. Yes. But, but but nothing like, hey, we, we need to take a screenshot of this. No, nothing like that. Exactly. But... <laughs> so pretty funny people will imagine mm. what they imagine right uh, that's been that's been life mm. from day one you know people like to mm. make it more than what it really is or really was right uh was there any truth to that game not supposed to be released at all oh i don't know i think he wanted to release it big time <laughs> <laughs> okay well uh, you know i think michael his name was michael anderson i believe and mm -hmm. he wanted that to go it was his creation his baby you know wow he put money into it, you know, right. whatever he put into it. He paid all of us. I know that we all got paid mm -hmm. for our acting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we probably filmed in Glendale, in the Glendale, California area. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, good, good times That's for sure. where all that was filmed. Yeah, yeah it's great times. <laughs> Of course, we touched base upon the Netflix series of Glow, and of course, it's become very successful. As mentioned, we're waiting on season three to drop next year. And yeah. the show seemed to have taken liberties in many aspects, and curious to hear if, uh, from what you've heard or might have been told, um, in particularly the name changes of the characters, and I believe Melrose on a Netflix series is representing you or is your counterpart on the show. Well, I, I, I have to say, I have to beg to differ, because I think Melrose is not my character. I think she's a, uh, a char uh, she's many characters, so I could see mm -hmm. MTV, mm -hmm. I could see Vine, I can see myself, so she's got, you know, she sings. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Hollywood and Vi did not sing, but MTV did sing, mm -hmm. and her hair and her outfit are a lot like us. 
same as like Britannia. I see Britannia as Zelda the Brain, mm -hmm. and I also see her as Godiva. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the ones that I would say more would be Zoya the Destroyer, which is more <laughs> you like Anunnaki for sure, mm -hmm. and Liberty or mm -hmm. the girl that plays Libertyville, Debbie Gilpin, mm -hmm. is a lot like Americana. Right. So, and then you have Machu Picchu, mm -hmm. Mountain Fiji, so mm -hmm. you see that. Right. Um, that's okay. I love it. I don't think they're trying to be, you know, they're just a little mashup of everybody. Mm -hmm. You see, that makes sense. Oh, but, and, and then it, it does make sense. And then, of course, Sam, which mm -hmm. is the director, right. I will say he is sort of like our director, but the one <laughs> thing our director, and girls have said it before, mm -hmm. Matt, did not do drugs, and right. he didn't drink. Um, I think that he liked to gamble a little bit, but mm -hmm. nothing, you know, just we live in Vegas, or, right. you know? But if we did any drugs, if there were, and we had, if, if we were caught, we, mm -hmm. were, we were definitely um, fired immediately. Right. There was just, you know, wrestling mm -hmm. is pretty serious, and, you know, everybody needs to be, have their head clear when mm -hmm. they're out there wrestling that cuts down on our on injuries and, and uh, stuff but i enjoyed season one from yeah. the get-go mm -hmm. from day one when as soon as i knew before i even saw it i was like this is going to be badass i'm so excited to see what they do and where they go and then i watched season two and i loved season two even more and i mm. even liked sam more i guess you know um He's a little more redeemable, and I'm not going to give anything away to some people haven't right. seen it. But I really liked, I liked him in season two a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still early, yeah. so all, all the characters are still developing. And, they are. They had still... a little more develop, developmental, right. the characters developing in season two, for sure. Right, and uh, I believe it was season two. It was just one episode entirely devoted to... The, uh, the sketches. Yes, <laughs> that was awesome. That I was, was like, weird. Yes. <laughs> I know. I don't know if you liked it. I don't know no, if I you did. did. But I, I was like, I kind of like it, but I kind of wish it wasn't just that episode. I kind of wish they put them in all and did the different episodes because I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, where's the wrestling? Yeah. Right. Right. They did dedicate it to to that one season to the sketches. And, cool. and I thought it was really uh, uh, ingenious because. I, it was, it was kind of missing too, but again, everything's still in the early early stages, storyline wise. And uh, of course, between seasons one and two, they got their main show. They're they're about to get syndication, and right. basically for now, uh, uh, I guess season three would would touch base on it. Uh, you know, the sky's the limit to see where they're gonna go with, with yeah, the company. and they're going to Vegas, so right. you know, we went to Vegas immediately. So we right. had a little more budget than they. <laughs> that's one thing. I think there was we had a little bit more of a budget than the, the, they did. They started that little speedy hotel. We were already at the Riviera right. Hotel. Right. And, you know? and, and being a TV show had to be stressed a little bit, too, because there needs to be yeah. the, that interest and there needs to be, okay, where is this character going and what's going to happen to so-and-so, especially if there are any couples. And, right. yeah, and I'm digging it. I think I, they've done a great job. Yes. I think that they're doing a wonderful job. Look, they're being, they've been nominated for Emmy. Yes. Uh, um, so, Ruth. Mm -hmm. uh, that plays uh, Zoya mm -hmm. um, um, is being nominated for an Emmy, yes. and then as an ensemble, the whole cast is also at mm -hmm. the Screen Actors Award. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited for them. That's pretty cool stuff. Yeah, and again, giving more and more recognition to what Glow used to be and where it's going That's now. Right. So you had the original wrestling show; it faded away. It, it took a break. <laughs> it took a long break, right. didn't it? <laughs> and thankfully someone had the idea of like wait a minute this this was a thing let's bring it back but yep. you know of let's course bring it back. make the necessary changes to make it interesting enough again for for tv show purposes for and, for tv show and yeah. especially for today yeah right and for today's world were you ever approached or given an uh, idea to maybe make a cameo i'd love I, I would love to be approached but I, none of the girls that i know of mm -hmm. as of now have been approached to do a cameo, I think it would be lovely to have somebody, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, I think it'd be great. Oh, definitely so, great. We'll, we'll cross our fingers. And, yeah, and maybe I mean, season three is already being uh, shot now, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um, when we, maybe season four things will change. It would Hopefully. be lovely to be on the show. I mean, and I've met a lot of the ladies, and they're very kind and very mm -hmm. sweet, and they're they're smart 
and they're wonderful actresses, very talented. Mm-hmm. Or maybe have a if you, if yourself and others can make those cameos, can, kind of like an episode where it's like a metaphorical passing of the baton, so to speak. You know, you know. Wouldn't that be awesome? And just congratulate the the new cast, uh, or at least right. you know, in in the show itself. And sure. yeah, that, I mean, season one had a bunch of cameos. I'm, I'm, I was digging the soundtrack and a lot of great. They 80s did remember. Yes. They did. <laughs> so again. Great job, and you know, hopefully, it'll be many more seasons to come, and not just yeah, me you too. Know, wrap it up after say four or five because that's how many seasons you guys had. No, that wouldn't make sense. Yeah, <laughs> no, it wouldn't. Nope, it wouldn't. I think there'll be a lot of, and they're only thirty minutes. That's what's so great about it. They're yeah. easy to watch, just quick, fast, and entertaining. Right, you know, because less is more. It and, is, and, you know, it still works. And yeah, again, exactly. you can binge watch the whole season in, in one day. Which, Absolutely. Which is and you I know what? My mother, my mom and dad are very <laughs> conservative. Mm-hmm. They really are. And my mom was like, I really like this show. She thought it was great. She goes, it had a little language. <laughs> and that first one had a little sex. Other than that. Yeah. Really I was like, okay. <laughs> but you know what? All shows do that. If you look at everything, they always got to have mm-hmm. this happening. You know, there's always some kind of sex. There's either a girl girl scene mm. or a guy guy scene or right. girl guy scene. Mm-hmm. They always have it in the beginning. That's for your ratings, I'm sure of it. And right. then they, they mellow out a little bit. But my mother mm. really enjoyed the show. Yeah, I was like, okay. And I, I, that, that was one scene I didn't expect. I mean, they could have done, done like a cutaway or, again, implying yeah. from yeah. Watch, watching from the bird's nest point of view, like, oh, they're Correct. making love. Okay, but yep. all right, let's uh, move on to the okay. next scene. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Next. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, are we, can we expect any future projects from you, uh, television or movie wise? Well, well, you know, working on this little film that I've been doing with Christopher, mm-hmm. um, I'm working on that stuff. But you know what? I do have some stuff for next year, 2019, that I'm not going to talk about yet because I don't mm. like to, okay. you know. Um, but, but there's always going to be something in the woodwork. The book that I've been working on is taking a little time, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, but I'm almost or working on that, just mm-hmm. to say that. And then, of course, all our glow stuff. We know we have all, all the conventions coming up. We have CAC mm-hmm. yes. that we will all be attending in April in Las Vegas. So we'll be there. You know, everyone can check social media. They can go to my Twitter account, at Glow Hollywood. Or if you're an Instagrammer, you can do official Glow Hollywood. Or if you're just one of the ones that like the Facebook pages, <laughs> you know, you can find me under Jeannie Bassone, um, and then it will say Hollywood Productions uh, next to that. But I will always post everything that we're doing, um, no matter what. And then the cruise coming up in September, we look mm-hmm. forward to that. That's September 7th through the 13th of 2019. Wow. That's the. Um, I was... Oh, and there's a comic. Gosh, I forgot. I got oh, a comic, comic coming. Another one. Yes. Another one. End of the year. They're working on that. Another company. Mm. Uh, there's an, one of the Glow Girls. I think hers is out now. She plays uh, California Girl. Mm-hmm. Um, that was Patricia Summerlin. And her comic uh, should be out now. I was asked and signed a contract just about, I don't know, a month ago. Okay. I'll be, there'll be a new comic. So I have an older comic that I love. Both mm-hmm. Lightning and myself have a comic that was done, I think, in the early 2000s, I think, if mm-hmm. it wasn't 1990-something. But I have mm-hmm. those, and I sell all of those at the um, convention. Both of us do. Well, so, again, staying, yeah, again, staying real busy. And, yeah, I mean, all, all you can do is move forward with uh, pro- that's right. ideas, and that's, projects. And that's what we do. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and I love it. Now, I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll get some, let's say, beef if i don't ask this because i'm I'm sure there'll be at least one other fan that'll be curious uh even though there was no association or any working relationship or whatnot but what do you think of the idea of the entire glow uh roster or the the original glow uh female wrestlers being inducted into the wwe hall of fame i would love it that would be great you know, mm-hmm. we, Glow is different. Remember, mm-hmm. it's, it's not WWF or E right. or... Oh, and NWA, I've been working with them as well. Gosh, right. that's a whole other thing with Billy Corgan mm-hmm. and David Lagana uh, working with one of their characters, Josephus. But yes, more the merrier. Bring us on. <laughs> we, would, we would be humbled and very honored. 
um, if if you want needed to choose or have to choose to do the actual p- presentation and induction, who who would you choose? To do it for us. Yeah, to to basically uh, to hand off the award, or in this case, uh, Hall of Fame rings for everyone. Oh gosh. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I have to think about that one. Of course, I would say Andre the Giant, but Andre's not here with us anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe one of the girls from Glow. Maybe we could get Kia Stevens mm-hmm. uh, to hand them off to us, or Ivory handing mm-hmm. it to her and her again. But that probably wouldn't work. You know, mm-hmm. any of the girls. I like Sasha Banks, but you know, just mm-hmm. gosh, um, wouldn't it be great if Wendy Richter could do it? It would be. Man, she, she she's yeah, a, she's an a, a alumni. She's also a Hall of Famer, and yeah, yes, that's what I'm saying. Wendy Richter. That would be too cool. Plus, we oh. saw her in 350 days, and that was awesome. Yes. <laughs> yes that, that was pretty cool. Well, you, you heard it here, folks. Uh, Hollywood suggesting well, more than one, but we prefer former <laughs> WWE Women's Champion uh, Wendy Richter to induct the entire cast of the original Glo- uh, Glow, Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, into the WWE Hall of Fame. And, yeah, I mean... It's definitely an idea. Uh, I, I don't know what yep. Vince McMahon would think of that. Uh, I'm sure he's been on, uh, you guys have been on his radar from one point in, or another. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, yeah, he, he might give in. You never know. Right. Like, I don't know if, I'm not sure if you've been watching recently, but yeah, he's kind of been caving in a little bit. But, you know, he wants Good. to sh- shake things up a little bit. But we'll see after the holidays. So. <laughs> yeah, after the holidays. That's what I say about everything. Let's, let's see what happens. Yeah. I think 2019 mm-hmm. is going to rock. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff mm-hmm. uh, that the Glow Girls will be doing and maybe going into different, you know, different, more acting. Mm-hmm. You might see some of us in the acting, you know, a little bit more. Oh, that'd be great. But okay. we'll always, but we'll always, be, we'll always be around you know, um, with our fans and doing mm-hmm. things with a lot of the Glow fans. Since they're out there and they love us. And like I said, without any of you, there'd be no Glow. So thank you all. Well, there you go, folks. Hollywood directly thanking all the fans for uh, their love and support throughout the years and basically yep. uh, resurrecting the Glow franchise a- a- entirely, of course, with the Netflix series. And now with more and more uh appearances and uh, meet and greets mm-hmm. throughout the country mm-hmm. and maybe even around the world. And now you, you got a cruise coming up for, uh, for next year. Hopefully that'll be successful right. enough. We have follow-up cruises and yep. maybe, you know, an idea stream some of the events on the cruise itself. And well, the rest of oh, us yeah. couldn't make it watching on social media somewhere. And yeah. We plan on doing some stuff there. There'll be, um, depending on who's coming on it or, or mm-hmm. what we plan on doing some filming on it for sure. Great. Great. And, of course, you're staying as healthy as possible. Uh, as you mentioned, through your Facebook pages, you do your live videos. and we, uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> at, least, uh, at, least, at least at one point I try to keep up. I said, oh, I just had lunch. So. Come on. You can do it even if it's just for 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I am. Good for you. Good. Keep it up. You can do it. And with that said, just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, Hollywood, for taking the time to join me here and to share some of your stories and to, I guess, some people who weren't aware of of anything they weren't aware of as far as uh, Afterglow life and what's coming up now. And right. hopefully to find it really intriguing. And maybe some friend in the future, we can have you back here as a follow-up. Oh, I'll do it in a heartbeat. And I'll bring mm-hmm. some girls with me if you'd like. <laughs> oh, that will be great. Definitely. Yeah. I'll have a little uh, group okay. talk here. Yeah, it'll be awesome. Yeah, we do it in a heartbeat for sure. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you so much. Uh, good luck with, with, with everything that's coming up. 2019 sounds uh, going to be a big and great year for you. Amazing. Yep. Yes. And uh, stay healthy and take care of yourself. You too. Thanks again. I appreciate it. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And to all listeners, thank you once again for joining me here on another episode of Talking with JM. Once again, telling you to have a uh, most healthy and humble new year for 2019 take care and be good until next time